Isaiah 43, 18. Pastor wrote that song you're hearing in, right now. And, uh, amen, amen, amen. There's an anointing on it. Isaiah 43, 18. It says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In your dry place. Amen. Wow. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord for backup. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord for backup. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for backup in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're going to read this in the NIV just so you can hear it in Jesus' name. Forget the former things. Somebody say, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Somebody say, do not dwell on the past. Hallelujah. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Somebody say, right now. Now listen, y'all, when you read the Bible, you got to read it as a prophetic book. Amen? That what you're reading, you're getting ready to receive. Hallelujah. If I put my faith on that word, I'll receive that right now. Somebody say, it's springing up for me right now. Do you not perceive it? I, I am. This is what God says uh, he's doing. He says, I am making a way in the wilderness. In other words, the places where you're lost in your life, God said you're getting ready to be found. The places where you're, come on, you don't have any direction. God said you're getting ready to get that today. I'm going to give you a way. Somebody say he's a way maker. Somebody say he's a miracle worker. Somebody say he's a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the wilderness and streams. Somebody say streams in the wasteland. Amen. Rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Just a quick prophetic word for about three people that receive it. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I just received a new stream in my life. Now tell them you ain't shout right there, but if you knew, somebody say, it's coming to me. It's coming to me. It's a stream of finances. It's a stream of wisdom. It's a stream of income. It's a stream of knowledge and understanding. It's a stream. Before we even get going, can we give God praise for the streams? Ah, I just heard that. Yeah, I did. I know I heard that. Turn to your neighbor say, neighbor, I prophetically speak to you that you're going to have streams for your dreams. I dare somebody to praise them. Oh, if you had a dream, you would praise him. I promise you. If you had a dream, if you wrote it down, if you thought about it last night, God said, I just sent provision your way. I just sent. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm taking y'all too fast. Amen. Amen. Taking y'all too fast. Amen. I'm taking y'all too fast. Amen. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, today. Pastor Dimitri is going to preach about embracing the new. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, all month long, I'm embracing a new thing. Oh, my goodness. That means some of y'all getting ready to get rid of the old thing. Let me show you how the Holy Ghost just said it. Some of y'all getting ready to kick somebody to the curb. The new thing is coming. That ain't right. And they not either. I mean, come on. They not ready. They not, they not ready for that yet. Amen. They wasn't ready for that. Amen. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Kick them to the curve. Oh, uh, I dare y'all. I dare y'all. I dare y'all. Somebody say the whole thing is leaving. Somebody say they got to go. Ah. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Can we get about, about a 10-second shout? Just a 10-second shout? If you kicking it to the curb and you getting ready to embrace the new, can you give them about a 10-second shout? One, two, ready, go! Oh, y'all ain't gonna go with me right there, huh? She laughing. 
laughing at me. Now what's up with that? Oh, y'all ain't gonna go with me, huh? Y'all ain't gonna go with me, huh? See, touch two people and say, I'm embracing the new. I'm embracing the new. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Sometimes I forget I'm 43. And in the recovery time of breathing, it takes a little moment to reset. Praise the Lord. Amen. One of the worst things you can do as a preacher is shout at the beginning of the sermon because then your energy level. Amen. Praise the Lord. You got to lean on that anointing more. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Woo! Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all know we used to be a storefront church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right, y'all. Listen. Embrace the new. Put the book back on the shelf. Play back on the table. Amen. Somebody say, gather yourself to hear from God. Amen. All right. In 2006, I had the honor and the privilege of becoming a father. And uh, Haley, amen, was a, I would like to say, an early Christmas gift from the Lord because she arrived in December, a little bit before Christmas. Now my December is filled with two birthdays and a Christmas. Amen. Somebody say pray. Y'all need to be praying for me right now for December. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Overflow. Amen. I needed to be here in November, like October. Amen. We need it here before time. Amen. Somebody say before time. Amen. Praise the Lord. They're watching. That's why I'm messing with them. Amen. So I went from husband uh, to becoming a father, and it was new. It was exciting. It was fresh. It was a little scary. You know, like not knowing what to do. Is she going to sleep through the night? You know, I remember one night she didn't sleep. And I remember rocking that thing with my foot trying to go to sleep. Amen. This thing again. Because we didn't have the automatic rocker at that time. Amen. Had not graduated to Bougieville. Amen. We didn't have it at that time. Praise the Lord. But uh, everything was beautiful. Everything was new. She was beautiful. She was new. Amen. And all of that, she's still beautiful, amen, praise the Lord. And, and um, I had to embrace the love. I had to embrace the time. I had to embrace the money. I had to embrace the newness of the thing. I wanted, I wanted to start off uh, by saying to you that even in your own life, when you have new things that are coming, because this, this is a prophetic teaching that God is bringing a new thing in your life, uh, because we are in the month of August. Somebody say eight is the number of new beginnings. And the Bible says, according to my faith, be it done unto me. So if I believe it's my new beginning, somebody say it's my new beginning. Amen. Amen. It's my new beginning. So God, what he's doing is constantly at work bringing new opportunities and blessings into our lives. Somebody say he's constantly at work. Amen. As believers, we are called to embrace the new things he's doing, and we're supposed to, with our faith, amen, trust him in his plan and his purpose for our lives. Amen. We got to embrace. Somebody say embrace. embrace. When we're talking about embracing, we're talking about accepting God and, and supporting what he does with, in, with, with our will and doing it with enthusiasm and with excitement. Somebody say, I got to embrace it. Yeah, new things, new things, new things. If you don't embrace the new thing, you're going to stay with the old thing. Hallelujah. New things. Have, have, it's it's this, this new thing God is talking about. It has not ever been in existence before. Hallelujah. God said, I'm not making you a copycat of a great original. 
Oh, y'all ain't going to listen to me. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are not a copycat of a great original. Nobody in here's fingerprint is the same. God has uniquely designed you for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Somebody say, new is not the former old. Come on, somebody, somebody say, it's not the former and it's not the old. Amen. New is to become fresh. New is different from what has existed previously. New means that something is coming that has not been known before. It's never been known before. God says this newness is coming into your life. New means something that has not been ever experienced before. New is the first kind of its existence. Hallelujah. Some of you are starting things. Oh my goodness. I can't do it. Hallelujah. Amen. I got the bishop's mic. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a new mic. Praise the Lord. I had to get rid of it. Amen. Oh, amen. It's the interference. We got interference. That's somebody enjoyed. Amen. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just. messing with y'all. Look, they turned it off. Look, look. Ooh, Lord, where this sermon going? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. New. Amen. Somebody say new. new. Gather yourself. Amen. Is the first of its kind to exist. God said, some of you that are listening to me today, you're hearing the word and you're getting ready to have a new lease on life. You're about to be brand new. Oh, my goodness. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, get ready to act brand new. <laughs> you know how folks be when you get it? They say you're acting brand new. You act like you don't know where you came from. Tell them, say, neighbor, this new thing that's happening in your life, old things are getting ready to pass away. Behold, all things are getting ready to become new. Somebody say, he makes all things new. Makes all. Yeah, God ain't doing an old thing. No, he's not doing an old thing. He's not going to do what he did last year for you. He says, I got something greater for you, bigger. God says, somebody in here hearing me is getting ready to break new ground. Y'all need to hear these prophetic points. You're getting ready to break new ground. In, in other words, you're getting ready to break into a new industry or breaking into another stream like we were talking about earlier. You're getting ready to break new ground. God said he is also about to breathe new life into somebody. He said, I'm getting ready to breathe new life into you. Oh, because what is it to be alive and you ain't living? Ah, he said, I got to breathe new life in you. You alive, heart beating, but you ain't living though. You ain't living. Somebody say, I'm getting ready to live. Ah, let's go old school. Turn to your neighbor and say, live, 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 live. <laughs> oh, I feel my preach today for real. You, you are about to have a fresh and new start, prophetess. Matter of fact, that's the prophetic word for 2024. We are starting fresh. This is the year for a fresh and new start. So when it happens, don't be surprised. Just remember, August 4th, 2024, at 11.55, God said, new start. <laughs> uh, you don't believe me? Because in about five minutes, we about to shift out of the morning into the afternoon. <laughs> Somebody is getting ready to have a fresh start in this building. If you want the newness of life, if you want the, to break the new ground, if you want God to breathe new life into you, if you want the brand newness and the new lease on life, ah, uh, you got to go ahead and give him about a five second praise so we can get to the next point. Come on, somebody say, I'm praising him for the new, 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 new. Ah, for the new, new, new. Amen. Amen. My mind just went to ATL, the movie, new, new. Amen. I went there. Amen. Turn to your neighbor say, my name is new, new. Amen. Ah, new, new. Amen. Amen. I gave the old stuff away. I, amen. I kicked it to the curb. Somebody say, new, 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 new. All right. If you want this, somebody say, I want it. I want the newness. 
If you want it, the first thing you got to do is let go of the past. Let's get into it. If you want to embrace the new, let's talk about it. First thing you got to understand is the necessity of letting go of the past. Somebody say it's necessary. I got to let go of the past. P.J. Morton wrote a song years ago. He says, as soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, when I let go and I let God, mm, let God have his way. That's when things start happening. When I stop looking at back then, uh, I let go and I let God have his way. Way. The Apostle Paul went deeper and gave us some word in Philippians 3.13. If you would go there real quick, Philippians 3.13, the Apostle Paul go, gave us a word. Amen. He wrote to the church at Philippi and he said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He said, I have not got what I have been praying for. I have not obtained that which I've been fasting for. I have not got a man or stepped into what I've been believing God for. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. Mm. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm sorry to bother you again. <laughs> but you've been brought to church by the Spirit of God to forget that stuff behind you. You got to forget it. You got to let it go. And you got to check this out. You can't check this out. Look what it says. I'm forgetting those things which are behind. I had my hand on it, right? So I got to take my hand off the things that are behind me, and I got to reach, come on, forth unto the things which are before. There's no way for me to reach if I'm holding on to the past. Somebody say, let that thing go so you can reach. Come on, come on, say, let that thing go so you can reach. Come on, say, let that thing go so you can reach. You got to let it go so you can reach. God says, I want you to let it go because what I'm getting ready to do in your life is give you a prize. Look at Philippians 3.14. He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I believe there is a prize winner in the building. There's somebody getting ready to win a prize from the Lord. Philippians 3.13 in another translation says, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm pressing toward the goal. Hallelujah. Amen. So we got to let go of the past. If you're taking notes, write that down. Amen. Somebody say, I got to let it go. Amen. I got to let him go. Amen. I got to let her go. Amen. I got to let them go. Amen. Some of you getting ready to change jobs. Amen. In Jesus' name. You got to let that go. God has something bigger and greater for you. Amen. Point number one, holding on to past failures, regrets, or even successes can hinder our ability to embrace the new. Somebody say, holding on to past failures, regrets, or even successes can hinder our ability to embrace the new. Hallelujah. Not only failures and regrets, which we all have had. Let's go ahead and get that out the way. Raise your hand if you failed before. Amen. Amen. If you're not raising your hand, I don't know if you're human and we need to blood test you today. Hallelujah. We need to blood test you because all of us have bumped our head, messed up. Amen. Anybody did the same thing twice. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's, hello, that's twice. Now, how about the, you did it three times. You messed up. Amen. All right, so we all have had failures. We've all had failures. We've all had mistakes. And we've all had successes. And we can't hold on to the last victory that we had. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can't hold on to the last victory you had. Amen. You got to take that energy, take that excitement, take that wisdom, take that ability, take that experience to the next thing that God has for your life. 
Years ago in 2004, I remember being in uh, television sales at KTBS, ABC here. It's a, a station here in Shreveport. Y'all know it. After, after I made my first sale, I remember somebody say first sale. As I made my first sale, it was a black man. Thank God for this black man. His name was Eddie Norris. He gave me some amazing advice. This is what he said to me. He said, take that excitement of your first sale into the next. Did y'all just hear what I just said? He said, take that excitement, that, that knowledge, that experience, that testimony, amen, take it to the next sale, the next meeting, the next appointment. And that was some great advice because I would go into the next appointment with the business owner and testify about the last deal I made. And I would do that over and over again. I would say to McDonald's, amen, Dudley DeBoja is excited about their digital sponsorship, their legal sponsorship in football. They're excited about this. And I would tell them about the opportunity and how amazing it was. And, 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 I, and, I, and I'll tell them, I said, I just had to call you and let you know that the restaurant sponsorship is available. And then I would pause. And then I would say, what day do you want to start? That's my clothes. Somebody say, that's his clothes. What day do you want to start? What day do you want to began. So I took old Eddie Norris's advice. I took that excitement to the next meeting, the next win. And see, what you got to do in your own life, you're holding on to past failures and regrets and successes, and you're hindering your ability to embrace the new. So when the new shows up, you don't know it because you're so caught up in the old. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't let your past failures and your regrets. Come on, stop thinking about them. Some of y'all thinking about them right now. Amen. Talking about, I should have never gave them my number. I should have never, I should have never did this. I should have, you thinking about all of that. Take your mind off of that. Say, say, stop letting it hinder you. Stop letting it stop you. Stop letting it derail you. Somebody say, let it go. <laughs> Today we got to let go the past failures. And we got to learn from it, amen, and move on. One of the things I tell my children all the time, you don't lose, you learn, man. You're not, you're not losing, you learn something right there. You learn what to do when they set the pick, how to run around this way. You learn what to do with this, that, and the other. You learn. Don't regret. Somebody say, just make good on it. Make good on it, amen, make good on it. Hallelujah. And move on, amen. Don't let any of it hinder your ability to embrace the new. Go to Genesis 50, 20. I want to look at Joseph real quick, who had to let go of the past and move forward. He had to let go of it. Put it in the atmosphere again and say, let go of it, let go of it. If you're not too scared, say, let go of her, let go of her. Tell your neighbor. Say, she ain't saved, no way. Let go of her. She ain't got no praise, no way. Let go of her. Come on now. She ain't going to even pray you through. Amen. Let go of her. Amen. She's not going to lay hands on you. Let go. Let go of her. Amen. Amen. She has no anointing. Let go. Let go. Let go of him. Amen. Amen. He ain't got no job. Amen. Let go of him. What you doing? Let go of him. Amen. Hallelujah. He don't even have a cell phone. Let go of him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let go of him. Amen. He don't even have a LinkedIn. Let go of him. Amen. Praise the Lord. He don't even have a resume. Let go of him. What, what are you doing? Amen. What are you doing? I heard a preacher say the other day, some of y'all are literally giving all to a Negro or to a female that bought you an appetizer. <laughs> Chips and dip, and you went in. Stuffed mushrooms, okay. I don't know what their face look like. I'm going to see it later, though. Okay. Uh-uh, you got to let that go. You're stronger than that. Come on, you're peculiar. You're, you're God's woman. You're God's man. Come on, you're the righteousness of God. Come on, you have holy nation on the inside of you. You're royalty. I said you're royalty. Some chips and salsa and some 
Guac. The devil is a liar. Genesis 50, 20. But as for you, he thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring it to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. This is Joseph who was betrayed by his own brothers. The Bible say they put him in a pit, lied, and said that he was dead, sold him into slavery, painted his robe red, and took it back to his father. And said that he dead, now what you gonna do? The man went in the sackcloth and ashes and prayed. Joseph went on from the pit to the palace to second in command of all of Egypt. And them same brothers that put him in the pit got hungry one day. The Bible say a famine came through the land and they got hungry one day and they had to go down to Egypt to get some bread. They had to go down to Egypt to get some corn. They had to go down to Egypt to get something and they got there and then here's Joseph. And Joseph don't look like himself no more because I don't look like what I've been through. Uh. Turn your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't look like what I've been through. I, I don't look like what I've been through. I don't look like what I've been through. So Joseph is literally giving them corn, giving them bread, and they didn't even know that was their brother. Because God will take you from the bottom to the top, and you will have to reintroduce yourself. Oh, turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, hello, my name is. Hello, my name is. Hi, my name is. Hi, my name is. Hi, my name is. I snapped right there. I went old school. I went early 2000s right there. White boy Eminem. I went Eminem right there. Turn to your neighbor and say, hi, my name is. That's what God getting ready to do. He about to blow you up. So you got to reintroduce yourself. Hello, I'm not the same person you knew back in the 90s. God has built me up because greater is he that is in me than he that is. I wish I had a church. He that is in the world. Becoming new. He said, you meant evil against me. You intended to harm me, the NIV says. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. To save many people alive. I want you to say this to your neighbor. Hallelujah. To help him a little bit. This is Genesis 50 in the Message Bible. Turn to him and say, Joseph said... Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Say, do I act for God? Go ahead and say, do I act for God? <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn to him and say, don't you see? They planned evil against me, but God used those same plans for my good. As you all can see, it's up for me right here. Joseph is not in a pit. He's sitting on a throne. What a transition. What a transformation. Some of you are getting ready to go up and you don't even know it. Don't you understand that everybody don't like you? <laughs> Some people are literally sabotaging you. <laughs> Some people are literally dragging your name through the street. <laughs> Some people are literally texting about you and you ain't even thinking about them. <laughs> Some people are literally doing these things to try to break you and take you out. But God said, they meant it for evil, but I'm going to work it for your good. I'm going to make it all turn around for your good. Turn to your neighbor, say, nay. God turning this thing around for me. He's embraced. I'm embracing new things. I'm embracing new things. I want to encourage you today and to help you to identify and release any past burdens that may be holding you back. Anything physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally people, places, things, any, any situation that didn't work out that you still 
hungering in, a, a, a waddling in, any addiction, any bad habit, any eating disorder, any mental illness, any depression, any, any anxiety, hatred, or envy, any type of heartaches or even broken heart. They broke your heart and you're still stuck in that thing. Any lies, any confusion, any type of betrayal, any type of manipulations. Real quick, lift your hands right there and say, in the name of Jesus, I release any past burdens that may be holding me back. Say, this Sunday morning, I choose to move forward. Say, I choose to move forward. Come on, say, I choose to move forward into the new. Now give God about a five-second praise right there for the new. I let go of the past, and I embrace the new now. Somebody say embrace the new now. Come on, say embrace the new now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta embrace the new now. And then, once you embrace the new now, you let go of the past, you embrace the new now, you gotta recognize, watch this, you gotta recognize that God's, that God is doing a new work in your life. You gotta recognize this. Somebody say, I gotta recognize it. God is doing a new thing. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Get that for the reading. 5, 17. Hallelujah. And like the old folks say, I'm a hasten to my close. Amen. Amen. Hasten. Hallelujah. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Another translation says a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become what, y'all? The new is here is what another translation lets us know. That it's here right now, that it ain't coming. It's here right now. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's important for you to hear. That it's not coming, that it's here right now. See, what I'm tired of is it's on the way. Uh-uh, it's here right now. See, faith is now. Now faith is the substance of. See, we forget about that. It starts, the Hebrews 11, 1 starts with the word now. Not later, not maybe, not next month, not Jesus got to come and die again and get up again. Somebody say right now is new. Yeah, you got to do that. You got to obtain that. You got to grab that in the spirit. It's here right now. You have access right now. And I hear the Holy Ghost saying that you need to take hold. You need to seize your new. Somebody say, recognize God's new work. Come on, open up, open up your mouth and say, acknowledge God's new work. Hallelujah. You got to perceive this thing. You got to apprehend this thing. You got to comprehend this thing. You, you got to do it. And last but not least, and I think I'm closing right here, you got to discern it. You got to discern. You got to know when God is doing a new work, so you won't just walk by it and miss what you've been praying for. Because God works through people. God will work through a place. God will work through a thing. God's new work in our lives is ongoing and transformational. God is never going to stop creating newness in our lives. He's never going to stop. He's never going to stop. He cannot do an old thing. He can't do it. And we got we to gotta have spiritual discernment to see and embrace his new work. Hallelujah. Lift your hands right there and say, I, I'm embracing the new work. <laughs> say, Lord Jesus, give me spiritual discernment. Come on, say, Lord Jesus, open up my eyes to see the new. Say, let me discern it. Say, let me recognize it. Let me not miss it, Father. Let me see it. Let me recognize it. Let me discern it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you know you heard from God on something about the newness of life, and God has given you a word about what it is that you need to do or wherever you need to go, 
you have to make up in your mind that you're going to trust God yes. and discern it and just say, you know what, this is the Lord's doing, and it's going to be marvelous in my eyes. I remember during my short time in ministry over the last 20 years, I've had new starts. I've had to leave the old and receive the new. I remember back in 2017, I came and talked to Pastor right back here in this media booth and told him at that particular time, I think we need to at this time, I hear the Lord saying, I need to come home. That was back in 17. Somebody say seven years ago. And about seven years ago, right? Yeah, I need to come home. I need to be with ministry and I bring whoever I have with me under our congregation, we just come in the house. He said, let me pray about this. Came back to me, said, one church, two locations. How many of y'all remember that? Yes, Came back, one church, two locations. And then the Lord said, uh-uh, y'all need to be under one roof. You need, to, you need to come together under one roof. Do you not know what has happened since 17? COVID. <laughs> need to be at home. Need to be covered. I'm talking to somebody right now that don't have a pastor, that don't have a church home, that, ha that needs to make a decision today. Yes. COVID happened. We was flooded in here. Everything went crazy. I, I even stopped going to church for, for a little minute, if I'm not mistaken. The Lord told me right before, co before COVID came, don't come. I said, that don't make no sense. What was that about? Don't come. And then COVID came. That God was going to have us online. That God was going to do this. I remember even, even, even saying, oh, man, we, we doing it the old way. There's a new thing coming. Dad, we got to get online. We got to stream. These things, man, were happening way back then, and God was pressing to do a new thing. What I'm trying to tell somebody in here is you're not crazy. Yes. I'm trying to talk to somebody. You're not crazy. What you heard God say, he's going to do. Surely he will do it. Lift your hands real quick. Pray this right now. Say, Lord Jesus, right now, open my eyes. Say, I pray for my heart to perceive what the new thing is. Oh, God, as you do it in my life, open up my family eyes. Open up my children's eyes. Open up the hearts. I want to see you high and lifted up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands right there. Lift your hands right there. Above our problems, above our old way of doing things, may we walk into the new. May we embrace the new. Hallelujah. Real quick, real quick, take out your phone. Go to your notes real quick. If you're taking notes, go to your notes. If you're writing it down, you can write this one down. The third point, trusting in God's new provision. You got to trust in God's new provision. God's new provision. As it relates to the provision that is coming, listen, I believe God is releasing his provision. He says, I'm doing it for your vision. I am also releasing supply for your schedules. You ain't going to be running around talking about how I'm going to fill up my tank. The devil is a lie. Somebody say over and above. <laughs> say everything you need. You're going to be running around talking about he's going to give you supply for your schedule. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody say he's giving me resources yeah. for my situation. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's situation did different. You might not need as much as the front row need. You might not need as much as the back. But I need it for my situation. Somebody say provision. provision. Trust in, trust in, trust God in this new provision that is coming. Hallelujah. I said new provision. That means what you have, God said, I'm getting ready to add to that. I wish y'all would get happy about that. God is saying this morning, I want you to trust me because in this new provision, I am doing a Jeremiah 29, 11. John Isaac, come here. 
I love it when the Lord confirms the word. Come here, John Isaac. Come here. You confirmed it, bro. I walked in late. I had a morning. And John Isaac is wearing Jeremiah 29, 11, that you're going to have to trust God. This is not planned. See, some of y'all, you just called him and told him to wear that shirt. You, you just trying to do some type of theatrics. You, you just trying to be some type of entertainment preacher. No, when the prophetic anointing is on you, you can speak a thing and it'll show up Sunday morning. And it'll manifest in somebody's life. God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you an expected end, a hope and a future. Somebody say, I got a hope and a future. Now give God praise for John Isaac's shirt. I said, give God praise for Jeremiah 29, 11. God is giving you an expected end. He's just calling for the trustee board. Where the trustee board at? Where those that's going to trust the Lord? I'm a part of the trustee board. I'm a part of those that trust them when I can't trace them. I don't have to see it, but I know it's coming. God is doing a new thing. It's getting ready to snap in my life. Crackle and pop. I dare somebody to jump to their feet and help me preach that God is releasing Provision, provision, provision. Provision, provision, provision. I dare you to go touch seven people say provision, provision, provision. Embrace the new. Provision, provision, provision. Oh, they prosperity preachers over there. I don't care. Provision, provision, provision. Oh, they laying hands on the sick and they getting healed. Provision, provision, provision. God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. He ain't lying in Jeremiah. He ain't lying in 2911. There is an expected end. I dare you to touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is an expected end for you. God has a plan for your life. God has a hope and a future. Get ready to embrace this thing. Get ready to go higher than you've ever been before. Get ready to go higher than you've ever been before. Somebody say, trust them, trust them, trust them. Trust them, trust them, trust them. I'm out of here, right here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Can't preach it all. Embracing the new. Have a seat. Watch this. Embracing the new. Write it down, write it down, write it down real quick. Embracing the new is going to require something out of you. It's going to require that you have the faith of God. Somebody say the God kind of faith. Yeah, the God kind of faith. Yep. In, in, in God's provision and guidance, even when the path, watch this, is unclear. When it's unclear. He said, I'll make a way. In the wilderness, I'll be rivers in the desert. Are y'all with me? Earlier we sung, uh, sung earlier, manifestation, right? We touch you with our faith, we receive manifestation. Embracing the new requires the God kind of faith. Not this TikTok social media faith. I ain't talking about that. <laughs> Where somebody literally can build a jet and make you think they sitting in one and they got a green screen. Don't. What are you doing? What are you doing? I can go rent a car in Atlanta. I can go rent a Bugatti, drive it, film it, and you think they got it. And they don't. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm talking about real faith. In God. Not in this world system. Somebody say, not in this world system. I have faith in the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I believe in what you can't see. 
I wish y'all would get with me right there. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, my God is invisible. Oh, you trying to see how it's going to happen in somebody else's life. No, you need to get on your faith and say, God, do it in me. Embracing the new requires faith in God's provision and guidance. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you tell me to go, yes, sir. Shonda, I'm a part of your Council, I'm a part of your people. Jay, I tell you, world fame, we blow a whistle, ban a tent hut, it's one, ain't nobody moving. Well, they probably moving today, I don't know. But back in 99, 2000, for the 99 and the 2000s, <laughs> praise the Lord, we, a tent hut forward move, there wasn't no, let. oh, Hey, did they say move? Did they say go? No, you're going to get ran over. I mean, you got to pick your feet up. Hey, Amen. You got to get that 90 up. I still got it right there. My leg's shaking a little bit because I'm tired, but I still got the 90. I get the 90. I got the 90. And there's no, there's a forward move. Look, there's a forward move and there's no discussion. We going to a new place. We ain't staying right here. We going over there. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, when God say move, you move just like that. Oh, turn to your neighbor, say, when I move, you move just like that. When God moves, I got to move, I got to go. No discussion, I ain't got time to have no conference call. We ain't doing no Zooms, we ain't doing, uh-uh, uh-uh, God said go. I got to go, my flight leave at five. I got to go, I got fart, I got to get on the flight, I got to go. I got to go where God is saying. I feel like somebody in here is getting ready to go higher. I feel like somebody is in here getting ready to go to a new place. I feel like somebody is getting ready to experience provision and guidance like never before. When you leave this building, you will know exactly what to do. When you leave this building, you will know exactly what to do. When you're driving on 220, you'll know exactly what to do. God is going to drop down the agenda. God is going to drop down the application. God is going to drop down the guidance. God is going to drop down the plan. He's going to drop down the purpose. And all you got to do is just step in it and walk into the goodness of God and embrace that new thing. I tell somebody to stand in their feet and just say, I'm embracing it. Oh, go ahead and wrap your hands. you embracing that new thing. I'm embracing it. I'm embracing it. I put my faith on it. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. I believe God is getting ready to do it. Not a dead work, but God is getting ready to put, you getting ready to put rather, some action with your faith. And you getting ready to work this thing out. Jump to your feet and give God praise. If you ain't got no lazy faith, say I'm not just saying it, but I'm getting ready to do it. I'm not just going to write it, but I'm going to publish it. I'm not just going to plan it, but I'm going to build it. Where are the builders? Where are the new? Oh, new, new, new. New, new, new. Go touch about five people and say new, new, new. There's a new blessing. There's a new anointing. There's a new aroma coming from your life. There's a new aura. There's a new presence. There's a new manifestation. Away with the guilt. Away with the shame. Away with the regret. Away with the pain. Away with the hurt. Walk into the newness of life. Experience God's guidance and provision. Experience him in a brand new way. Embrace the new thing. Give God about a five second shout. Go one. For the father two. Come on. For the son three. For the Holy Ghost and power four. For me and you five. For grace and favor. Come on, I know the plans I have for you. Declares the Lord of glory. I've confirmed my word with a t-shirt to let you know it's coming. It's here right now. I believe 
God is doing it and I got enough faith if I gotta crawl I'm gonna go get it if I gotta crawl I'm gonna go get it if I gotta crawl I'm gonna go get it it's mine it's mine I receive it go high five your neighbor and say neighbor it's mine it's mine it's mine it's mine I believe he's doing it right now it's confirmed in the spirit you in the right place at the right time give it God glory right now lift it up hey listen 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 your faith has to have action And one of your first places to activate that faith is with that praise. Watch this. Because when I praise him, I'm letting him know I believe it's already done. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor. The reason why I'm sweating, the reason why I'm praising him, the reason why I'm giving him glory, because I know it's already done. Come on, John. Come on. There is no way. I brought him back again for double portion. There is no way that this would be in my sermon. And he has it on his shirt. God, I hear the Holy Ghost saying, God says, I am going to speak a word to you. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to speak a word to you. You're going to lay down, and you're going to rise, and it's going to manifest. Oh, y'all need scripture? The Bible says, day and night, they reaped harvest. There is no way, y'all. Stand to your feet. There's no way. Because see, Dad says Sunday, you got next Sunday. And I didn't hear from God until Saturday. Mama Kim over here saying that's the way it works because she's seen them do it before. See, anytime you see God doing stuff like this and giving you glimpses and confirming stuff, something is happening. So, time, Bambash, lift your hand. Ooh, lift your hand. Listen, y'all. You have a little bit of an idea of what God could do. Listen, the Bible even says that we prophesy in part, and we know in part. In other words, there's another part to it. So God gives you a glimpse of the glory getting ready to release, but then there's more to it. Like God says, I want you to preach the word, embrace the new. But I'm going to bring one of them scriptures in here to let you know I ain't playing with you. <laughs> hey, turn to your neighbor and say, God ain't playing with you. This is it. 